The indie author revolution has been around for more than a decade, but we indies continue to push the boundaries of what we're capable of. From getting over initial prejudices to staring down perfectionism and author imposter syndrome, we've become a force to reckon with. Indie authors now wear more hats than ever as we strive to create a career full of meaning, prosperity, and potential. We've juggled the demands and continue to be rebels in the face of adversity. Now, after years of hearing the shouts of hustle and grind, we indies are rebelling again. Gone are the days of publishing a book a month until we drop, and in its place are the seeds of a better way to rapid release. A way that feels incredible as we build a sustainable, lifelong author career that not only increases our visibility and royalties, but it's all done with intention and ease. If you're ready to buck the system and become the visionary authorpreneur I know you're meant to be, you've come to the right place. I'm Carissa Andrews, international best-selling indie author, and this is the Author Revolution Podcast. Well, hey there, guys. Welcome back to the Author Revolution Podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Hopefully you had a fantastic Thanksgiving. Ours over here was definitely a fun and exciting endeavor. We had my family over, my mom and dad and my brother came over along with our oldest son and his girlfriend were here. So we had a a really good Thanksgiving and it was a, a good time to finally be able to get together and have some good food and enjoy the day together. It's been two years since we were able to meet in person for Thanksgiving, so it was nice to have everybody here. So hopefully you guys had a great Thanksgiving as well. Hopefully you had your friends and your family over and you were able to stay safe. And uh, yeah, so hopefully it was a good time. So this week, we have another special guest coming on to the podcast. Joe Prosit is an author, a local author here that I know in town, in the small central Minnesota town that I live in. He is now the acting president of the Lakes Area Writers Alliance, so he filled my shoes when I vacated. And he's an overall great guy. He's one of those people that is just very genuine about what they know, who they are, and overall, you just know kind of what you're getting into when you listen to Joe talk. Now, he is a short story horror and psycho thriller, psycho fiction writer. He writes a lot of different things that really get your mind thinking. And when I first read some of his short stories, I was like, wow, this is a guy who knows his stuff. He is really in tune with the things that can make you think and the twists that stories can take. So when I was speaking at the latest Lakes Area Writers Alliance conference back in October, I asked Joe if he'd be willing to come on the podcast. He so graciously said yes. And so today I'm going to be talking with Joe about his process. This particular episode is going to be great for those of you who are interested in short story as a means of either getting started or getting your feet wet in the fiction realm, because he has been doing this for a very long time and he is a pro at being able to write and get short stories published in literary magazines, fiction magazines, all sorts of different things that he's done. It's it's a pretty incredible feat that he's done. He's always been our go-to guy at the Lakes Area Writers Alliance for teaching short story and how to get published in that racket if that's something that you're interested in. So to have him on the show is really a treat. And if you're a short story guru or someone who is looking to become a short story guru, this is definitely the episode for you. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome, Joe, to the podcast. I am really excited to have you here. This is, I think you're technically the first person I know in person to join this podcast, unless I'm like, well, I guess Colin and Jenny don't really count, but you are the first author (laughs) for sure. (laughs) So welcome. I'm really excited to have you here. Yeah, that's very cool. Thanks for having me. This is my first, um, I guess, podcast where it's not actually a story. It's the first time I'm being heard on a podcast, I guess. Awesome. Well, I feel very privileged to to be the person to do this. (laughs) So in the intro, I described a little bit about how you and I know each other and, um, you know, kind of how we became friends. And so for my audience who would like to learn more about you, can you tell them a little bit about who you are, how you got into the writing space and what it is you write? Um, Yeah. So I guess I've, I've always kind of, I've always written, Um, but for, you know, as a kid, it was just kind of a hobby that I did. I think a lot more kids write when they're kids. And then most people just kind of get out of the habit of it. 
And for me, it just never really stopped. But then I think about 2010, 11, um, I found this website called Lit Reactor, where you could submit your stories and get feedback from it. And it really like got me back into the idea of like, yeah, I really enjoyed doing this. And like, what if I actually tried to get published and, and other people read what I wrote? And it was kind of like a, a no brainer. Was, Duh. Like, why, why wouldn't I be doing this? Um, yep. <laughs> so I, I think I've been writing short stories in earnest since about then, since about 2010, 11. And I don't know, it was three, four years ago, found out about this Lakes Area Writers Alliance in my own hometown. Um, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and there I met you and a whole bunch of other really cool writers. And um, since then, it really since, you know, 2010, it kind of started out online, getting to know people. And then when I joined LAWA and I got some other writer friends that were in a, a writing group. And it's really um, cool to start building this community of, of other writers, you know, around myself because it's, it's a lonely gig. It's a <laughs> right. <laughs> most of the time it's, it's just you and a keyboard and, you know, the voices in your head and to talk to other people and to hear their feedback and not just like, it's great talking like business wise and, and figuring out the ins and outs of the business and the racket. But then also just talking stories and characters and plots and all those things. It's it Absolutely. it's great. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, what type of genre do you write in? It's horror, right? For my yeah. audience. I mean, I know um, what you write, but they, they probably don't <laughs> yet. Right, right. Um, so I call it horror, sci-fi, and psycho fiction. Love it. Um, yeah, and it's a nice catchphrase, but it's also like obviously science fiction and horror. But then there's all this other kind of stuff that um kind of fell through the cracks of those things, whether it was sort of more like your basic crime nor that type of stuff, or just like your psychological thriller, mm -hmm. um, anything that messes with people's heads, you know? I've read a few of your stories that are like that, that are just, they're not quite so far to the horror spectrum, but they really are that psychological thriller bend and, and they're really good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, I like it. I, um, yeah, I guess I grew up with the real basic stuff when I was a kid. It was, you know, being a, a boy in the 80s, it was Arnold Schwarzenegger movies and G.I. Joe <laughs> in these plots that were very straightforward, you know, very, here's the good guy, here's the bad guy, the good guy beats the bad guy at the end. And <laughs> <laughs> to play, did you just spoil all of my childhood movies? What? Right. Yeah. Come on, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, spoilers, spoilers, everybody. <laughs> now you know how every Arnold Schwarzenegger and G.I. Joe episode ends. <laughs> yes, yes. Rats. <laughs> yeah. And then I think, uh, you know, I started watching like Twilight Zone. Uh, uh, I almost thought you were going to say Twilight. I was like, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, close. continue. Sorry. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> <laughs> but I think like Twilight Zone and maybe um, Tales from the Crypt on that same same area or same time frame yep. really showed me like, oh, wait, the good guy doesn't always have to win. Like there, there can be what? these ironic, tragic endings and that became really interesting and exciting for me. And, and if I can capture some of that vibe, then I'm having fun. Heck yes. Well, okay. So before becoming the new board president of the Lakes Area Writers Alliance, <laughs> congratulations, by the way. Yeah. It's <laughs> been were, busy. Yeah, I bet. Um, I, com I completely understand that one, ironically <laughs> enough. You were our short story guru. You were the guy that we always turned to in order to help us kind of with other authors who are looking to write short story, but also in our big conferences and stuff like that. So what is it about short story creation that really appealed to you in the very beginning? Was it uh, being able to condense that uh, psychological thriller down into a really short piece or was it something else? Like what, what really drew you to short story at first? Um, well, I think if, if, for one, I think readers are more willing to forgive you for giving them a bad ending, for giving them a <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I think you... Easier let down. Uh, yeah. Check. Yeah. If you write a hundred thousand word epic novel and, um, you know, at the end, the, the main character fails at their journey. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think readers are going to be too happy. Although. Unless you know, there's a book too. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I think that one of the most tragic endings is uh, Stephen King's Dark Tower series. I won't talk too much about it, but boy, that ending takes yep. you for a ride. Right. Um, yeah. So it can be done, I guess. But um, 
<laughs> but you don't have to be Stephen King to pull it off. Is that right. what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But uh, I, I really enjoyed, especially starting out writing um, and starting out to, to push it out there and to um, let other people read it and to get feedback. It was a great sort of uh, um, mill to be churned through um, to write a story, kick it out there and get feedback and try again and, and get feedback like, oh, this one kind of fell flat and then do it again. It was like this, um, it was like a drill. It was like a, when a football team runs a play over and over and over again, or a different play or a different play, it's you, you go out there and you do your best and you take your hits and you learn what works and what doesn't. So it was a great way to learn. Absolutely. Uh, I was just going to say it, it sounds almost like taking this whole concept of being an author that, you know, I teach and condensing it to be a, like a smaller process so that you're winning and you're failing quicker so that you get to the good stuff faster. Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I am slowly trying to transition to novels. I have a few works in progresses um, that I'm excited about. And I, I kind of have a plan of, of, you know, continuing the short story game and continue to um, work that drill um, all the while building some, a couple novels in the background and uh, hoping to release some of those maybe year, two years from now. Nice. Ooh, that'll be very exciting to see when that comes to fruition. So are you a pantser or are you a plotter? I am heavy on the plotting. <laughs> okay. Uh, I figured you might be. <laughs> <yep>. <laughs> it's hard to do psychological thriller or horror or anything like that without having some idea of where you're going with it. <laughs> right, right. And, and um, I mean, I, I, I enjoy the, the panting aspect of it, but like sometimes it just turns out to be a lot more work <laughs> yes. because you, you write the whole thing and you realize a lot of it doesn't work. And, and looking back, I'm like, wow, that was, that was a lot of wasted time. <laughs> I don't know that it's ever wasted, but I, I know what you mean where it's like, dang, now I have to redo some, if nothing else, it taught you definitely plot the thing. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. That's not wasted, <laughs> but it, it maybe is a really good reminder. <laughs> I get it. Right. Right. Yeah. So lately I've been really thinking a lot about um, individual scenes and I, I read a lot of books and, but I also watch, watch a lot of movies and I'm, I'm really a sucker for those scenes that you recognize the beginning of it and you recognize the end and you can watch those five, seven minutes and say, wow, that was awesome. That was great. Right. And I've been thinking a lot about like, what makes a scene? When does it start? When does it end? Why does it matter? what makes a, how do you connect a bunch of scenes so that they all, it's all propels forward and it's all inevitable. So that's what I've been, been working on lately. And it's, it's very much like short stories, right? Like one chapter, one scene is, uh, can be like a short story, but it is different. So that's been, it's been fun. Yeah. Well, and I could see how it's, it's very similar because you're creating that, you're still creating that arc throughout a chapter. And it still has to have a rise, fall, beginning, middle, end, but it's connected to everything that came before it and everything that's coming after it. So there's right. a little bit more of that interconnection, which expands it out a little bit more. Sometimes I think that's fun, but I, I see the appeal in short story too, being able to condense that all and have, have such a unique, I think I would imagine that you'd be able to um, spend a lot more time, I guess, on your words and making sure things fit perfectly or the way that you really want them to, to a short story. Is that the case? Yeah, I think it's, I would say it's more challenging to maintain that focus that you can have in a short story. So if you write a, say, a 2,000 word short story or 5,000 word short story, it's really easy to maintain focus and go through each of those paragraphs, each of those parts, and really fine tune it all. And when you have something that's 70,000, 100,000, boy, it takes a lot more focus. And a lot uh, more time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot more time. And, and it's, I think it's, you know, now as I am working on the novels, I find it more challenging to, to sit down and say, okay, this, this part matters. This one half of one chapter of a 25 chapter book, this matters, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and to make the, each of those parts sing. And, and I think that's why it goes back to like that scene, like what makes a good scene? If I can focus on that one scene and really make that sing and it's all connected, then, then I got the whole thing. Right, absolutely. Okay. So where does your inspiration come from? Um, so on the short story side, I, I really like the, the kind of cheesy pulpy freedom 
that short stories have. And so like Ray Bradbury and Stephen King wrote a lot of short stories yeah. um, and graphic novels. And like I said, Twilight Zone or Black Mirror. Um, Black Mirror is yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're so good. I mean, that Twilight Zone was good too, but Black Mirror, had take, they've like next leveled that. Yeah. 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 I love it. So um, yeah, that, that opportunity to be, to kind of abuse your characters in some ways where uh, you can run them through the ringer and, and let them die, you know, and, and of course, like short, like any story, any arc is about somebody learning a lesson, right? Like that's the idea is yep. this character yep. has a flaw and they go through this, these problems and they grow and they become bigger. And with a, with a tragic ending, you can do the same thing except for the the thing is that the hero or the protagonist never really learns that lesson, but you, the audience get to feel smart and you can, you can see uh -huh. where they, they failed to complete that arc and they failed to learn that lesson. And it's kind of a uh, guilty pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> it's also a reminder to us that sometimes we are ignoring our own lessons in real life. And so maybe to pay more attention so you don't turn out like, right. This, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's true to life. I mean, uh, a lot of times people don't win. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd like to think most of the time we figure it out. Sometimes it takes us multiple tries, uh, multiple goes. But um, I, I love those tragic endings because once, once the first uh, Twilight Zone episode came out and the good guy didn't win at the end, then all bets were off. Yeah. Right. Like after, after years of watching all those very straightforward plots, of, of the good guy always winning and then suddenly they don't it's like oh well now anything could happen <laughs> it's like the first time there was swearing in like a public television channel you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> it's, yep. hey, it's out now <laughs> <laughs> all bets are off who knows yep. it's, it's it's crazy that's awesome okay so what does your writing process typically look like can you walk us through kind of your process uh, from start to finish, like let's say you're starting a short story, what, what does that typically look like for you? It differs. It, it, um, sometimes it's very methodical and I sit down and I, I have a process for, okay, I'm gonna brainstorm and I'm gonna come up with some ideas and I'm gonna cognitively come up with a story, right? I'm gonna sit down, I got a plan, I can I have a very simple sort of short story outline and I can kind of plug those pieces in until it makes sense and then I can write it. The better stories I've found have been when I'm, um, you know, you kind of have to leave your mind open to ideas, but the ideas just kind of fall in, in my lap. Yeah. And that's when it sort of just happens. And, and that's what's fun about short stories that uh, sometimes I, I don't, you don't have to plot a lot with a short story. One of the last ones I wrote, uh, I was, I got an idea document. Just a Word document where I just plug in all my ideas. I one of those. <laughs> yeah, I think we all do. Yep. <laughs> Most of it's garbage, but every once in a while, you know, something, right. something works. And I was, one morning I was typing out this idea and it was like, I think we, when we were kids, you ever have that, that suspicion of like, you look into the mirror and you put your hand on the mirror and like, what if the, the only thing that's stopping me from going through to that other side is my own hand? Right. Like the, the other person on the other side is that's what's stopping me. There's not a pane of glass. It's just this other world. And if I could desynchronize myself from this mirror self, then I could get through or right. they could get. Through, right. Yeah. So I'm kind of typing that out on my idea document. And then I, I said, well, what if what if the person on the other side is like the evil version of you, the the bad version and everything around instead of you know, your nice, clean bathroom, their walls are covered in black slime and fungus and and all this. And as I'm typing this idea out, I realize I'm three, four, five paragraphs in. I'm like, wait, this isn't, this isn't an idea anymore. This is, I'm writing the story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and all I wrote this is just flowing. <laughs> yep. I wrote the thing all the way to the, the end. And then I had to go back to the start and rechange the beginning. And instead of saying, what if saying this yeah. is happening. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Sometimes it, it just happens like that. And sometimes you got to work for it. Yes. Sometimes I, like, I, I totally get that. I was in the middle of a story and I thought it was going to go one way and I got to the halfway point and I'm like, it's just not working for me. Ended up having to replot like from chapter 15 all the way down to 25. And now it's flowing much better. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny how that happens. 
Yeah. I've, I found the best way I get over my own writer's block is with the delete button. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Usually, usually I've, I've written myself into a corner or something's not working anymore. And for me, it's usually I'm, I'm not clear enough on the direction I want to go. And so there, there's something that has to get thrown in there, whether it's a comedic relief or, um, you know, I have to up the ante a little bit and it's, it hasn't happened yet. There, there's always something that I'm missing and I'm like, okay, what part of this book am I in? Okay. I really, yeah, I probably need to like make someone die or disappear or something. You know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> something has to happen here. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll lean back and I'm like, it's nice, but how can I make it a little weirder? <laughs> weirder. I love that. That's a good question to ask. Maybe I should do that. I do that sometimes too, where it's like, I'll even ask um, Jenny, my PA, I'll be like, okay, so if you were in a graveyard, what is one of the weirdest things you could see that's going to happen as you're standing there? And she, she'll throw out ideas. And one of them was some kids running through the graveyard in just their underwear. I'm like, perfect. That'll work. <laughs> yeah. That'd be creepy. That'd be a little weird. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was like, just works, just works. <laughs> okay. So now you said that you are working on a novel for the first time, correct? So how has writing a novel been different then for you from writing short stories? Like, has it been a bigger struggle or has it flowed easier because you already have the story structure kind of process in your head? Yeah, I I did do a lot of pre-writing work. You know, it kind of starts in that same way of, you know, I'll have a blank document and really kind of free form writing and just letting, not worrying about what, if it's going to work or not, or if it's interesting or not, or what's going on. And after I do enough of that, then I can kind of plug it into a, a structure and say, okay, well, here's act one, here's act two, here's the character's arcs, here's their motivations, here's their wants versus their needs. And if it's exciting enough, if it, if it catches me, then, you know, hopefully the idea is that it catches the reader um, and it kind of just kind of takes off. And, and I like to do as much pre-writing as I can until it's sort of like a champagne cork and I can't hold it in anymore. And it's like, now it's got to go. I can't wait anymore. Yep. Um, it's ready to go. And honestly, it's, I don't know if it's easier writing a novel. It's, it's easier to do. I don't know if it's easier to succeed. Or be good at it. <laughs> Those are two different things. I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> once, once I got a basic idea to sit down and, and continue that idea. Well, now I, I, I don't have to come up with an entirely new premise every, every week or every month. Now it's, I get to work on this one thing with these one characters that I've kind of had the uh, opportunity to flesh out. So yeah, it's, it's more enjoyable, I think. I could see but that. It's a much longer payoff where a short story, it's, it's like, uh, well, it's like sitting at the slot machine and you're playing quarters. <laughs> I've never and done a slot do- machine, Joe. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Put in the quarters, you pull the crank and every once in a while it pays off. Yay. And Sorry. it feels like maybe writing a novel is more like uh, investing in a, in a 401k or something. <laughs> <laughs> I have never heard of it quite described like that. That's funny. <laughs> You're going to be a lot more patient. <laughs> That's why we, we try to get faster. That's why I'm teaching this whole like rapid release thing, man. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, funny. Oh, that cracks me up. And it's, it's interesting that you you talk about how, um, the, like how you view the differences, like with, um, Kim. So our, our mutual friend, Kim, uh, she, she likes to keep her stuff condensed. And so to try to expand it out further, like she does novellas because she's just found that she loves that smaller version of a story, but not quite a novel length size. Sure, so sure. I was, I was really curious to see, like, if you go from short story to novel, is it like super, strange or if it does it feel liberating and so I'm glad to hear that <laughs> you think it's <laughs> it's liberating I, I personally enjoy it but that's just me I, I like yeah. to, I like to talk I guess <laughs> <laughs> okay so your first book which uh for those of you who are watching the podcast episode it's this one uh machines machines monsters and maniacs it's a collection of your short stories how many are in this one uh 16 so 16, 16 yep yeah 15 of those have been uh, previously published, whether it's podcast, short story, uh, online, uh, magazines, whatever it was. And then I threw one more in there for a bonus. Nice. Uh, never released, you know, to give, give people something new. But yeah, that, it took a couple years um, working the short story grind to get 15 published and out there and in circulation. And um, 
kind of like we were talking before we, we came on after a while, those stories go out there and, and, you know, they're listened or, or they're read and then they just kind of go dormant on the internet. And after a while, I'm like, well, I, I got all these short stories. They're not doing anything for me or for anybody else. So it only made sense to wrap them up into one book and uh, to push it out there. That makes sense to me as well. So how many books or how many uh, short stories do you have total published? Is it, I mean, obviously it's more than 15, but is there more or were there more before this was compiled together? No, that, so that was my my first 15. Okay. And I, since then I have about seven more. That's awesome. And yeah. And um, I'm looking forward to cranking out about another 15, grabbing up one that's uh, not published yet and throwing it in there for another 16 and making a volume two. That's awesome. So when do you expect volume two to come out? Oh, uh, so that one, I think um, the first time I got a short story published was 2014. I think that book came out about 2020. So it took me six years. Okay. Um, and now I like to think that by 2023, so a lot quicker. Yeah, right? oh, for sure. I kind of know what I'm doing a little more now. You're like the master guru in, in our area for all of this. Are you kidding? <laughs> well, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, it's, it's tough though. It's, it uh, takes a lot of persistence and perseverance to, because the way the short story market is, is, is you get a lot of rejections and it, uh, for certain that's how novels are as well. And I, I fully suspect that when it goes to submitting for novels and, you know, especially if you go the traditional route, but uh, it is, you know, you got to take your licks and uh, you got to learn to ignore those rejection letters and just keep hitting submit and keep working it out and maintain the optimism to keep writing new stuff. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But so, uh, so you mentioned, um, you know, how, when you're, trying to put all your stuff out there that it's, you know, traditionally wise, it's a little bit harder because you're going to have to, you know, either wait for that acceptance or move on and just do something indie wise. And you published this one indie published, right? So did. Did, was that a plan from the get-go or were you going to try to do it um, more traditionally and try to publish it that way? Or did you just want to see how the, the indie process worked? I think the lightest, I, I think I had all those things. I had all this material. And it wasn't doing anything for me. And I'm like, well, this is silly. I, I know I can indie publish it. And if for nothing else, it gives me something to talk about and to sell and to, you know, another way to get people out there. One other challenge about the short story market is generally people are fans of a certain publication, right? The fantasy and science fiction or nightmare or, or whatever it is, right? Um, but it's very hard to build a following as a short story writer. Because when that reader buys that one issue or listens to that one podcast, they hear half a dozen writers. And then it might be six months, if you're lucky, by the time you're back on that same publication and that potential reader, if they just so happen to read every single issue, finds you again. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I really needed a way to collect everything that I've done. And, and here's me instead of here's this magazine or here's this podcast, or whatever it is. Here's everything that I got. And, and start build that following. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and then it, it's a, a, a terrific, see if I can speak today. It's a terrific springing point too, for then when you do launch those novels, because now you've got like, here's all the stuff that I've done before. And if you like this stuff, oh, you're going to love this one type thing right. as well. You know what I mean? It's kind of that, that nice little segue and it helps you to build that author platform that will, that will pull those readers into something much larger and hopefully. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. So like for those, um, hesitant readers out there for people who don't want to commit, like, Hey, I'm, I'm a one night stand. Like, come. <laughs> That's another way to put it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Come by, give me a half hour, 45 minutes of your time. If you like what you read, keep coming back. If not, well then, you know, go find the next thing. And, and right. cause you know, I write some kind of weird stuff. So it's not going to appeal to everybody. And, and that's fine. But uh, I think if, I think if you can get past the kind of the weirdness or the scariness, I think, I think stories are universal. You like that though. I mean, your, your readers <laughs> in that genre are going to love that. You know what I mean? If they're oh, yeah. <laughs> the usual and the, the scary and the mind bendy, they're going to like that stuff. So I wouldn't be, a, you know, apologetic about that at all. I think it's awesome. Your readers are going to love it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> For sure. Okay. So what advice do you have for authors out there who are just starting out? Maybe they, they want to try 
short story, or maybe they're just trying to, you know, get their feet wet. Do you have any advice for them as they get started on their journey? I mean, there's, there's endless amounts of advice out there and, and there's a lot of very smart people who talk about the craft of it. I guess my advice would be more just of, of the, the work ethic or the, the doing it of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which kind of sounds stupid, but like, uh, if you're a writer, you write, that's, that's all there is to it. There's a lot of people who say, well, I, I'd like to write, or I've always thought about writing a book. I would say, just do it. Just, mm-hmm. especially with short stories. Again, your commitment level is so small. Um, just see if you can write that, that story about one person's most important day of their lives, uh, on one place with one event and find that, find out how to, how to, build that beginning, middle and end and make it interesting. And that's, that's, I think that's all the pieces you need for the bigger stuff. So if you want to write, you know, the next great American novel or a, you know, 17 book long epic fantasy series, (laughs) figure out, figure it out small and and first and, and, you know, kind of do your time in the trenches and then you'll, you'll have the tools to, to go big and to, to excel. Yeah, I think there's something definitely to be said about giving your, I guess, giving your all into the the process of it so that you can go at least one time around, maybe a couple of times around so that you can learn the whole thing because you really don't have the tools to to continue onward with a career for it if you can't even finish the first one. You know what I mean? You have right, to right. you have to see that whole process through in order to to really see things from the I guess holistic perspective. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and also, also like giving yourself the freedom to be bad. <laughs> yes. You will suck at first. Yes. Well, I'll suck in. <laughs> yep. Yep. And then it's, move on from it. Stop trying to tweak the hell out of it. <laughs> right, right. And to finish something. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I hear from a lot of other people that I've started writing it and, and they're just kind of churning away or they got this constant idea they're thinking about. Uh, just get it done, man. You know, mm-hmm. uh, even if it's garbage, which it probably will be like, I've, I've written garbage. I know. Like you, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we all have. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, like you said earlier, it's not wasted time. It's, it's lessons. It's yeah. um, yeah. You, you probably learn more from the ones that flop than the ones that you do uh, or the ones that, that work. Um, you learn a lot about yourself as an uh, author and, and a creator too, when they do flop, because then you go, okay, what was it about this thing that did not work for me? You know what I mean? Like I, I personally know, for instance, that I'm not a huge fan of writing in third person. I just am not right now. I don't know what it is. I like being in the head of the person that's telling the story. So I've tried, I've given it a go. I don't like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> short story is different though. I I've done it in short story and, and that seems to be fine, but for whatever reason in novel, novel format, I can't do, I shouldn't say I can't, I don't like to write third person. <laughs> yeah, I, I steer more towards third when it comes to long form. Cause you? yeah, you get to head hop a little more and you get to um, see this big world from different perspectives, which is maybe cheating a little bit. Yeah. See, I like the, I like the unreliable narrator. That's what I like to do. Yeah. So it, it's hard to do that when you have an omniscient viewpoint. It's like, right. Mm, right. No, <laughs> real close, tight third person. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. It, it's fun. And that's another thing about short stories. You get to experiment around a whole lot in a third second. I've tried a few second. That's, that's different. That is different uh, when it comes to, especially if it's a fiction. I mean, second's pretty, yeah. pretty much used a lot of the times for articles, but that's so much right. for storytelling. I think it only works in very specific, like you have to do it intentionally. Yeah. You, know yeah. you are doing this and this is happening to you. I've done it like once or twice. I think there's one in, in the current book that's in second person. Gotcha. But, uh, that's cool. All right. So where can my listeners find out more about you, find out more about your stories and obviously get a copy of your book? Um, everything it, you can find on my website, uh, www.joeprosit.com. It's spelled J-O-E-P-R-O-S-I-T.com. Uh, the book is there. All the links to the most recent short stories, podcasts, those things are there all in one stop. So I'm all over the internet, but, uh, that's your launching point. Awesome. And you are a Twitter fan, correct? Yep. Yep. I'm on Twitter, <laughs> uh, at Joe Prosit, uh, yeah, just at Joe Prosa. 
I am so glad that you were able to join us today. And I really appreciate you sharing your journey and sharing uh, with my audience, especially about the concept of short story, which is something that I haven't really talked about a lot on the podcast. I think there's going to be a lot of listeners who are going to really benefit from kind of hearing another perspective of how you can actually create the stories. So thank you for, for joining us today. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for having me. Wasn't that a great episode? Joe is just a really fun guy. He's one of those dudes that is just so much fun to talk to and be able to learn and listen to. Short Story was never on my radar until listening to Joe talk about it when he first came into the Lake Area Writers Alliance and started telling us more about how it works and all the different ways to be able to get published and what he's done over the past decade you know, to get his work out there. It was something that really opened my eyes to different ways we indies can come about our indie racket (laughs) and try to get our writing and publishing out into the world. His journey really is an inspiring one, especially for those of you who are loving the short story marketplace and loving the short story realm to be able to get your written word down. Definitely check Joe out. You can find all of the links to locate him on today's show notes. So you can head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash 109 to get those links. And then of course, if you want to be able to download today's transcript, you can always do that as well. Thank you so much for joining me today for this podcast episode. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. And if you are, I would love it if you would leave a review. Your review, whether it's a five star, which I hope it is, or something else, or just your written word, letting people know why you like this podcast. It'll help those who have never listened before to understand what's interesting about this particular podcast. And it helps me too, to know that I'm on the right track, providing information and insights that you're interested in. So make sure wherever you're at, whether it is iTunes or Spotify or iHeartRadio, wherever you're listening, Just leave a quick review or a star rating, and I would so greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, next week, we're going to be diving into some more insights and tips, but we've got so many new and interesting interviews coming your way. So stay tuned. Have a wonderful week. Make sure you get all of your words in. I myself am wrapping up Immortals, so wish me luck. Go forth and start your author revolution.